Welcome to The Author's Attic, a production brought to you by Social Problems, the official journal of Triple SP, the Society for the Study of Social Problems. My name is Casey Henricks, and today I'll be joined by Professor Sophia Abdekar of the University of Massachusetts at Boston. She'll be discussing her article entitled, Gifts Among Strangers, The Social Organization of Free Cycle Giving. It appears in our May 2016 issue. Without further ado, please let me welcome Professor Abdekar. It seems like not a week goes by without something in the news about the sharing economy, um, whether it be about Airbnb or Uber or Lyft. Um, you know, this type of company, sharing economy company, um, very controversial, very, very successful. Um, FreeCycle is an older member of the sharing economy. And it's a bit different. It's not monetized. It's, um, it's not for profit and it's grassroots. Over 8 million members um, across the world are using free cycle platforms online to give things away to complete strangers in their local communities. There is no expectation of anything in return when people give on free cycle. I wanted to know, given this controversy about the sharing economy, whether free cycle um, offers a, a more pure form of it, a more pure form of sharing economy, is it an alternative to the capitalist market system? And why are all of these people giving things away to strangers? So Free Cycle is an environmentalist focused organization. So, you know, they would say, you know, people want to keep things out of landfills. And it's true, tons of stuff is kept out of landfills every day because of Free Cycle. But um, as a sociologist who's interested in environmentalism, I know that it's pretty rare to have like purely green motives that usually, you know, we're influenced by a whole slew of cultural expectations um, that sometimes don't even have to do with the environment. So I wanted to see, for example, is free cycle activity about altruism, is about solidarity with those in our local communities who are less fortunate. And to learn more about free cycle, I was a free cycle member myself for, for a number of years, which meant that I both gave things away for free cycle and I got things for free cycle. I read the daily digest uh, up from the listserv where people would post offers so offer gently used filing cabinet or things they wanted so they would say wanted um clothes for a three-year-old um and i i interviewed the moderator and i also did a survey of the local members where i asked more directly open-ended questions about what why people did free cycle so what i learned from this research is that um, altruism, solidarity, and to some extent environmentalism are actually secondary. So instead, what we have is what I term the greenwashed convenience. People are really motivated by decluttering. They want to declutter their homes in a fast and convenient manner. And it turned out that for a lot of them, free cycle provided that. They didn't throw things away in the um, trash because there was a secondary motivation of that was tied to environmentalism. We have this greenwashed convenience on the one hand. And on the other hand, in the actual behavior of, of, of free cycle giving, I found that people were influenced by social norms that come from gift giving. So gift exchange just to your family members or your friends and from charitable giving. And in charitable giving, there's an expectation of control over the recipient, you know, kind of deservingness, like do these people deserve to get this thing, how they're gonna use it. Um, so I saw that happening. And on the other, and from the side of the organization, we had um, a situation where environmentalism was very much highlighted, but inequalities um, were actively hidden. So around holiday time, especially, you would get these wanted posts that would explain why people needed things. Um, they would say, you know, my husband lost a, his job. We have no money. How am I going to buy a Christmas present for my kid? And the moderators were instructed by free cycle staff, which I should mention is just a handful of paid staff for this organization of 8 million people, really lar largely run by local volunteers. And so the volunteers would be told, um, you know, erase this type of post. And people would complain, we don't want to hear about why you need it, just say what you need. So there is, they're hiding the inequalities. And so between hiding the inequalities and um, 
the cultural norms from gift giving and from charitable giving serve to downplay altruism and solidarity in free cycle giving. And I argue in my paper that free cycle is partly as successful as it is um, because it's predicated on class difference, on goods trickling down um, the class ladder. And so that frustrates its potential as an alternative system. Um, and yet, you know, I also saw that there's active work being done to downplay what it can do for remedying some inequalities. So I argue that with some pretty minor changes, you could have free cycle address both environmentalist concerns, sustainability and climate change, and also um, work on remedying the wealth inequality in its local communities. So it is not a zero sum game between environmentalism and um, fighting inequality. You've been watching The Author's Attic. Let us say thanks to our featured guest, Professor Sophia Optikar. Please stay tuned for future installments. Back to our feet. Free. Free.